Hello everyone, so it is early April 2021, we're uh, repointing this wall here but that's not what I want to talk to you about because just next to this wall here on the neighbouring property they've got some wood chip down uh, in one of their beds, they've kindly given me permission uh, to make this video and uh, there's something very very special that I want to share with you and I'll try and find a good example. Here we go. Look down here at this guy. And this is, I believe, a black morel or a wood chip morel. And it is an extremely prized find. We've got a few of them here. I've got some here, a few more back there. And there's a couple more. They're a little bit past their best, dotted around. And the black morel is probably the most sought after mushroom for foragers. It is a real find, a real treat. I've never ever found one before. Um, so it's, uh, it's thrilling to be able to share this with you. And I'll just pull another one up and I'll explain where you'll find them and how to identify them. So almost always in the UK, if you do, if you're lucky enough to find them, it's going to be in this type of substrate, this sort of bought in bark chipping or wood chip or whatever they might call it at the garden centers. Now, there are some poisonous lookalikes that we'll talk about shortly and I'll explain exactly how you would tell them apart and make sure you don't have them. But before we do that, also I want to explain that even these guys are actually toxic if you eat them raw. You want to make sure that you cook them well. Don't just cook them, flash fry them or whatever, cook them properly. Um, they dehydrate really, really well for storing. To make sure that you've properly identified your mushroom, we actually need to cut it in half. Just give you a really good look at the, the structure. It's described as a honeycomb stru structure. It doesn't, it's not hexagonal, but it's got these veins that run down and then almost randomly ascribe ribs in between but cutting it in half is very very important and we cut it in half down the middle and what we're hoping to see and what I'm sure we're going to see is that it's going to be hollow inside yeah this one's got a little slug in it we'll just get rid of him because he's had his part the rest is mine <laughs> but look Inside, you can see both the stem and the cap are hollow. That is a super important identification feature. Another one, you'll see that the, the cap, which is obviously all of this bit, is attached to the stem right the way down to the base. The entirety of the cap is attached. There's another morel, which is only semi-attached and um, it would be attached down to about here and then it would, would not be attached anymore. You still have these ribs, but they wouldn't be attached to the stem the way this one is, right to the bottom. That one's still edible, just not nearly as nice. But the dangerous lookalike that you want to look out for, the false morale, the patterning is slightly different on the outside, but the real identification feature that you're looking out for is it wouldn't be hollow inside. In here, it would have a kind of, I've heard it described as like a brainy type mesh inside. I've also described, heard it described as looking a bit like wool, but it wouldn't be hollow. This one is completely hollow inside, right up through the cap. That is the most important identification feature for these guys. So you also get something called the yellow morel, which as his name suggests would be you know a little bit yellower than this and um, I've never seen those but this is my first time finding these guys and I'm absolutely thrilled like I say this is probably the most sought after forageable item any forager is ever realistically going to look for apart from maybe truffles but as I've said, you know, you'll find it in substrates like this. Now, I've spoke to the chap who lives here, obviously, and he's kindly given me permission to make this video and uh, also to harvest these, and I'm, we're gonna share them. This is, this is the sort of habitat you want to be looking in. I've heard people finding l masses of them in car parks that have been laid recently. Now, this is last year's bedding. This was uh, put down last year, so that, I suggest, would, would be, uh, you know, a fairly good idea 
as to where you might start. But it's not the sort of thing that I know I've gone out looking for these several times. It's not the sort of thing I've heard a lot of people actually find when they're looking for them. It tends to be something that people come across when they're not looking for them, when they're looking for something else or when they're not looking at all. Like I say, I was working just next door. So we're going to harvest a few of these up now and cook them well. They're a spring mushroom. So any time from now right through till around June, June might be a bit late depending on the season. We're in April now, so April through till June, and maybe even as early as March. But, uh, you know, we're in peak morale season now, and I am just over the moon. I cannot tell you how excited I am to have found this little guy. It's been on my mushroom foraging bucket list for such a long time. So there you go. And I'll, before we go, I'll just show you. There's a couple of... Look at these guys down here. These even bigger ones. Fan fantastic look at that fantastic <laughs> so there you go the black morel or common morel uh, not to be confused with the false morel the false morel is actually deadly poisonous these guys are toxic if they're raw so look after yourselves do everything right and uh, happy foraging thanks for watching make sure you're subscribed press that like button and i'll speak to you soon cheers